Starting off with the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates include the sugars and polymers that are built from sugars. In our bodies, carbohydrates provide energy. They provide a quick, quick source of energy, and they also just provide raw material. They provide carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms and things that are needed for our bodies to be able to build up other sorts of molecules. So they provide energy and they provide raw materials. There are three different categories of carbohydrates. We're gonna start with the simplest. These would include the smallest sugars, which are called monosaccharides. So notice this word, mono, that mono again, that means one. What this is talking about is one single sugar molecule. Um, and a good example of this would be glucose. Glucose is what sweetens a lot of soft drinks. Another good example of a monosaccharide would be fructose. Fructose is the type of sugar that is present naturally in fruits. And I'll show you some pictures of these on the next slide. Bear with me for right now. Uh, both of these monosaccharides have the same chemical formula. They both have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. However, the atoms are arranged a little bit Bit differently. So there's a name for this. If they have the same atoms just connected differently, the name for that is isomers. So glucose and fructose, these are isomers of each other. So hang on for the picture. Uh, let's just go ahead and complete our list here. So monosaccharides. Okay, if we take two monosaccharides and attach them together by a dehydration reaction, what we would end up with is a disaccharide. So this prefix di, this means two. So we go from mono to di, one to two. Okay? And disaccharides, we've got a few examples of this lactose. You've probably heard of lactose. This is the sugar that's present in milk, sort of makes milk uh, have a little bit of a sweet flavor. Some other examples would be maltose. This is a sugar that is found in um, seeds that are in the process of germinating. This is the type of sugar that's used for making malted milk ball candies. Uh, it's also used in the process of making beer. And then third example, so lactose, maltose, sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide, and sucrose is the official name for table sugar, or sugar that you would use in like in normal baking. So sucrose, another good example of a disaccharide. Sucrose comes from plant sap. It's produced by plants, and plants use it as a natural sort of energy store. So there you have it. Finally on this slide, our third category, so monosaccharides, disaccharides, finally polysaccharides. And just as the name implies, poly, this means many. This is talking about many sugar subunits joined together. So these would be polymers of monosaccharides. Three examples of polysaccharides. Glycogen, this is present in animals. This is how animals and people um, store extra glucose molecules that we might have from our diet. Glycogen, um, in the case of humans, glycogen gets stored in the liver and also in all of your muscles. And this is um, something that we'll come back to at the end of the semester when we talk a little bit more about human physiology. Starch is essentially the same thing. Okay, so it's a stored form of glucose monomers, glucose monomers connected together, uh, but this is how plants store extra glucose. Okay, so this is the form in animals, this is the form in plants, and then also in plants we find cellulose. Okay, so these are both, interestingly, these are both um, ways to store glucose but the arrangement is a little bit different. The glucose molecules are arranged differently in starch than they are in cellulose. Cellulose is what uh, plants are built from. It's a good building material, and it's also an important part of our diet. Cellulose is what we call dietary fiber. It's important to have fiber in your diet. Uh, what does fiber do? So the interesting thing with cellulose, uh, we are not able to digest it, actually. We don't have the enzymes needed to break it down and harvest nutrients from it. So essentially, it just passes through our dig digestive tracts sort of unchanged. Um, but it does, it does some really important things. For one thing, it cleans the digestive tract as it goes. It kind of acts like a little scrub brush, cleans the walls, and that's very important. That's very important for preventing uh, things like colon cancer even. And it has a lot of other health benefits too. So dietary fiber, this is an important thing to have in your diet. Unfortunately, most Americans don't get the recommended amount of fiber. Um, and that's something that you can, 
you can in your own diet if you're low in fiber there are some sort of simple things that you can do to increase fiber intake things like choosing whole wheat breads instead of just white breads that's a good way to increase fiber content um, what else generally whole grains are high in fiber um, beans are definitely high in fiber so anyway there are little little modifications you can make to get more fiber in your diet let me show you some pictures to go along with all of these we'll start with the monosaccharide so a picture of glucose and fructose i want to show you these two isomers of each other all right so here is glucose this is what's called a linear structure of glucose it turns out a lot of times this carbon likes to reach around and grab hold of that carbon and that ends up forming this ring structure so these are both both of these are symbols symbolizing glucose just two different forms of glucose okay, and comparing glucose with fructose and what's the difference? The only difference is the position of this group and this group. So see how they're just swapped? That's the only difference. So these are isomers of each other. These are both examples of monosaccharides. By the way, I certainly don't expect you to memorize this structure, this molecular structure of either one. Um, rather, I would expect for you to be able to tell the difference between a, like a monosaccharide versus a uh, polysaccharide. Let me show you a picture of a polysaccharide. These are the three polysaccharides that we had back as examples. Um, so let's see here. We've got glycogen. This is a schematic of glycogen. Each of these green circles is representing a glucose molecule. So see this includes many glucose molecules connected together. Again, this is the stored form of glucose in animals. And if we compare that with starch, essentially it's the same thing. The only difference is that glycogen has a lot of branches in it. It's a highly branched molecule. Starch, not so much. This is just kind of a single strand. Um, but this is in plants. This is in animals. Cellulose, again, this is in plants. This is the structural building material for plants. And the type of bond that forms between monomers is just a little bit different than in starch. Otherwise, these are essentially the same thing, just a stored form of, of glucose. Okay, so this one, this is the dietary fiber. This is the thing that's good to have included in your diet.